Hi and welcome to this talk about remote memory data application attacks. Let's start off with a quick motivation. So nowadays basically everything is offered as a service in the cloud. So from renting a bare metal device over a virtual machine, also serverless computing can be performed online. So usually cloud providers try to isolate their tenants using some kind of isolation, language level, sandboxing or virtualization. And even though the isolation secures from software exploits, resources might be shared and this could lead to side channels that might be exploitable. And more and more, network, as networks get more and more stable, the network throughput is increasing and gets also more attention to, for, for side channel attacks to be um, exploited online. So where could an attacker now basically be in a remote setup? So the attacker could be co-located in a cloud hosted system, or the attacker could run some malicious JavaScript, or the attacker could be in the same network or even across the network attacking the victim over a public API or web service. So Regarding memory data application, it was re-enabled on Linux and Windows after there were several attacks shown. So there were like things like cobot channels demonstrated, roham attacks, byte by password leakage attacks on Nginx, but all of the, them were demonstrated in a um, cross-domain environment. So typically it is used in virtual machines and Based on the attacks I just mentioned, there were active mitigations which were trying to prevent these kind of attacks. So we were asking ourselves, can memory data application attacks be performed on the same security domain across the internet? So how does a typically memory data application attack look like? So at first we look at memory data application. So typically virtual memory is stored in a physical memory somewhere. And if an attacker would like to uh, perform a guess about memory, the attacker fills in the blue pages and there is a kernel thread scanning over all the pages and trying to find identical ones. So if the uh, thread found some identical uh, page, the uh, uh, thread deduplicates it and now uh, maps the page as read only, so clears the, the right bit and, and pages now point to the same address. And the attacker now performs a write operation on the page. So now it has to be again split into a separate page and then an optimization comes into play which is called copy and write. So the page is first copied and then a write operation is performed on it. And the attacker now measures the delta over it and observes either a higher or a lower timing depending on the page whether the page was deduplicated or not. And this can be seen using this histogram. So for instance, uh, here we have the case where it wasn't a memory write on a non-deduplicated page and here on a deduplicated one. So about one microsecond uh, of timing difference. So how could this be now exploited in a remote scenario? So the attacker would attack a remote server, which we have here and the attacker now first would send some data with same content or the guest to, to the server and the server application would fill the RAM. This could be some in-memory cache and then the OS deduplicates it. As we have seen, the attacker performs an update operation via the API, the, the victim overrides it and triggers a uh, again a page fault and the attacker would measure the round trip time. So in our paper, we present a remote deduplication or memory deduplication attack on a remote server, which was 14 hops away with very high latency. We were using a KVM to virtualize a Ubuntu virtual machine. We were using Nginx with PHP and memcached and MySQL installed. And to capture network and web requests, we were using PyShark to perform that. In our paper, we define three challenges and the first one is to remotely amplify latencies. So this is important to get rid of noise. The second challenge would be to try to override 
uh, page faults in the same security domain without relying on shared memory. And the third one would be to enable byte by byte leakage by having the control over the alignment and shifting in byte by byte and trying to um, leak the byte using the memory deduplication attack. So for the first challenge, as some already might assume, you could just uh, try to get within the same domain uh, multiple pages being deduplicated, which was also used for cover channels so far. So we can just increase the number of pages being deduplicated and trigger now the copy on write page faults and see that the timing steadily increases up to 150 microseconds for 128 deduplicated and overwritten pages at once. So for the second challenge, we were thinking about a scenario where the attacker has the capability of uploading files to a web application. It's quite reasonable. So for instance, a blob upload or image upload. So this data would then be cached in some in-memory cache like memcached and the attacker would be able to override the uploaded data and trigger page faults. So what can be done with such a scenario? So in the first case, we demonstrate that in the paper, we could fingerprint system libraries or the operating system. And what we did is we um, used the memcached um, to fill in binary large objects and fingerprint um, the libc version. And to do that, we had have a PHP application that offers two routes, one to store data and a second one to replace data. And one challenge we faced here was that we don't know in which, what the page alignment is within the memcached store, so within the slab item. So we need to first guess all possible offsets and use the memory deduplication uh, side channel to recover which one was the correct one. And there is another challenge. There is a race between other users since we have a use after free scenario, so the attacker would first um, insert an item, then release it or free it, and then again reallocate another item with the same slab size. And there the attacker has a race between with other users to again get the same item and trigger then the copy and write page fault by overriding the deduplicated item if the guess was correct, of course. Um, so how would this, this looks like as follows. You see another nice histogram over uh, 14 hops and you see that in the non cow case where the library is wrong, we see a significantly lower timing. And in the other case, we have a significantly higher timing and that with only 40 requests. And this is already enough to distinguish these two distributions and um, identify the libraries. Another use case we show in the paper is how we can remotely break KSLR and remote VMs. And here we sample low entropy pages. So in the best case pages in a kernel text image, which only contain a certain pointer. And as the entropy of the kernel um, text segment is not high, it's only two to the power of nine, we can then try all the 512 different offsets by creating um, 512 guesses and then using a similar scenario as before for the fingerprinting, the attacker would upload binary large objects and trigger page faults. And this looks again as follows. You see clearly that the correct offset is significantly higher from the timing perspective than all the other 512 offsets. So to fulfill our third challenge and solve our third challenge, we were looking for a target which allows us to have control over the alignment of data, of co-located data. And we found that InnoDB, which is a memory cache for database management systems, can be leveraged for that. So there exists this reorganization optimization, which is used when performing an insert or update operation. And this allows it that data gets reorganized within the, the RAM. And that basically enables byte-wise leakage. We can, in addition, 
use memcached as leakage primitive to leak InnoDB records. As a typical InnoDB record would look as follows. So it is typically 16 kilobyte large and it, we assume in our paper that we have a, the following layout. So we have one record in here and the white space is some in between record data. Then we have one co-located um, um, attacker controlled uh, record next to some target record, which is the blue one. And we assume that the attacker can control these two um, yeah, records. So this could be like um, some user table where the attacker could change the size by making a, an image file larger or smaller. And when performing an insert or update query, this can fail and that is, since the data is kind of frag fragmented. So now the reorganization optimization comes into play and rebuilds the page by clearing the content and then inserting records in their logical order. And therefore we need this RAX um, record to trigger constantly the, um, the reorganization. And once this is done, we, we might have the, the page in a certain layout such that um, the uh, RAT record, which is known to us, is co-located to the first byte of the target record on a full four kilobyte page. And this would now allow us to use um, the guessing of um, the content on a byte-wise granularity. Okay, so once this is reset, the um, attacker would now again trigger the reorganization and switch between these two states to leak more and more bytes by changing the uh, yeah by changing the records to the previous sizes. So in the high level, this looks as follows. So the attacker has on the one hand the the target alignment as discussed using the reorganization, and in parallel, the attacker uses some in-memory cache like memcached and also uses some amplification for that since we observed that the uh, yeah that the copy on write bit is not clear cleared after overriding overriding the, the origin record once so we, we use different um, fill bytes to amplify it and uh, in the in the paper you see more details on that um, so the attacker would now guess the DW uh, would do the, the, the usual steps, so wait for the deduplication, and if it's deduplicated, the attacker um, observes it via the copy and write page, faults the amplified once by triggering an overwrite on the memcached pages, and by repeating that step, the attacker can um, leak byte by byte until the full secret is leaked. So how could we mitigate this problem? So one such solution would be to disable memory deduplication entirely. Another one which was proposed uh, by the University of Amsterdam was called Vusion, and this applies same behavior, so fake merging of pages. There was also a proposal to only deduplicate zero pages. Of course, you could also detect such attacks using packet inspection, and because usually it, it looks like a large DDoS attack probably if you do that uh, quite um, often and in a repeated uh, way. And another variant would be to encode the pages with different random salts. So for the Vusion patch this looks like follows. So you see clearly that if the patch is applied you have this fake merging respectively same behavior and we cannot distinguish anymore for the KSLR break with what the correct offset is. So concluding this talk, we demonstrated a new scope for deduplication attack, a completely uh, remote one. So the attack was also assigned with a CVE. We were able to remotely fingerprint libraries, break KSLR, leak database records using this target alignment changes, and in between, also, Red Hat developed a probabilistic mitigation as opt-in similar to the views, Vusion patch we saw. This was it from my side. Um, thanks for your attention.